All my life, I've wanted the city of Boston to love me. The city of Boston to love me back. But now, the Moonlight Sun finally gets the opportunity to shine some light on the Commonwealth. To make Boston my home. Wrestling fans, welcome to another installment of MWF Ultra. We had a very unexpected journey to Orlando, Florida, and my Hall of Fame partner in crime, Mr. USA Tony Atlas, is on assignment as well. Our in-studio efforts have been pretty difficult over the past two weeks as we count down the days to the big one on Northeast Homecoming, MWF Project X, Saturday night, December the 28th, as we come home to Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts, featuring WWE's Mark Henry, Vicky Guerrero, Evan Bourne, TJP, Gerald Briscoe, Tony Atlas, and a host of others. Club Cam Zagami has been building a force with his uprising faction, using the money that he made by appearing on John Cena's American Grit reality TV show to, in essence, try and eliminate his former benefactor, John Cena Sr., from the equation. As noted, Zagami has invested a great deal of money in former SmackDown general manager Vicky Guerrero to be a senior advisor to the Uprising faction, along with former MWF tag team champion, now Ring of Honor standout, the big, bad brawler execution of Brian Malonis, who will see action on December the 28th. Two-time MWF heavyweight champion, the man that competed in the first match in company history, Slick Wagner Brown returns to the fold with Zagami. Second-generation athlete Brian Pillman Jr. makes his MWF debut December the 28th as part of the uprising factious. I'm very, very anxious to see Pillman live and in person. Perhaps the prodigy of the group, Christian Casanova, returns to action at Project X with a very unlikable attitude focused on one thing under Zagami's watch, winning. Rounding out the faction is relative newcomer to the New England wrestling scene, D.L. Hurst, who the uprising apparently has big plans for as well. Hurst isn't the only newcomer debuting at MWF Project X. What about Wheeler Yuta, who's been tearing it up from coast to coast and making quite the name for himself? Interesting side note, in Wheeler's early years in the King of Sports, he was at least partially trained by the ultimate piece of trash stalker Dylan Cage down in the Carolinas. We've heard from the eccentric Moonlight Sun Mike Skyros in studio. We've seen him getting to know the Boston area. However, at MWF Project X, Skyros finally debuts in the squared circle. One of my favorites, the Demon Lewis Ortiz, is his back and looking as good as ever. The only thing this man hasn't done here in the Millennium Wrestling Federation since debuting in 2002 is win championship gold. Old friend, the mass hole, Mike McCarthy, returns December the 28th. That's Mass Hall. Get your mind out of the gutter. Mike is a fighter with heart through and through. If you've never seen him compete before, you're in for a treat, to say the least. The veteran Jason Rumble is back in action as well. It'll be very interesting to see the dynamic where Rumble was once part of the John Cena senior-led uprising. Does he have ambitions on joining Zagami's effort? That's just the tip of the iceberg, fans. Live in-ring action is only one part of Project X. The night begins with a VIP exclusive question and answer session hosted by myself and Tony Atlas with several of the featured superstars. That takes place prior to the autograph and photo fan fest that's open to everybody, where you won't just see the superstars, you'll meet them. This isn't like WWE Fan Access WrestleMania weekend, where so many thousands of fans are in attendance that you're almost rushed through the line like cattle. You'll be able to create wrestling memories that'll last a lifetime on December the 28th. We pay tribute to our friend, mentor, manager, and family, the late, great Paul Bearer, as we continue our tradition, now the 8th annual Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive. We started it together in 2012, before he passed away with the help of Scrooge himself, John Cena Sr. Our goal is to update Santa's GPS so he finds every kid's house each and every Christmas Eve. We'll be having a giant mega raffle and auction to help the cause. It's going to be a great night from top to bottom as we make our long-awaited return home to Boston. Discount VIP packages and tickets are on sale now over on the BostonWrestling.com super site. Tell a few with several hundred of your friends so we can sell out Memorial Hall December the 28th. Next week, we'll be back with even more announcements right now. Let's go up to the squared circle as we go retro with more great MWF action. Slick Wreck the Breath, the underground king, the world champion of this promotion. You know, I wrestled Jay Lethal, another great wrestler from TNA Wrestling. I always, always got him beat, but somehow some skunk want to come in and mind his business and ask you, Slick, what is your problem? What is your beef? And now, tu tienes tu gentes que no me gusta. You got people that I don't like. 
steel cage for your precious belt. That belt means a lot to you, Slick. I know it. We go way back. I know that belt means a lot to you. And you in a cage with me and you. I be 5'8". I'm a pit bull. I'm an animal. This, this is nothing. I've been on lockdown. I've been in county jail. So this cage, especially in B-Town, man. All I gotta say is to live and die 187 because tu a ver el nuevo capellón and that's homicide. Brrrra! Hola, Leo. Slick, tell me, if he comes at you and he, and he comes with a pitchfork, if he comes with his bag of beans, what are you gonna do? Are you ready for that? You know, Gino, these legs, I haven't shown what they can do. Well, they're pretty damn fast. If Homicide thinks he can catch me, he got another thing coming. You see, I grew up on the streets of Jamaica. I ran from dogs. I ran from cops. I scaled fences. I did it all. So tonight in the cage, I'm home. Just like you, I'm home. But we got comfortable in the cage for different reasons. And I'm gonna show you tonight why. I am the underground king. Why? I was handpicked by JBL to run the uprising, and why I am the MWF heavyweight champ. MWF heavyweight champion Slick Wagner Brown defends against homicide inside this 15 foot high steel cage. It's a double header. Double your pleasure, double your fun here on the February MWF Ultra. Slick Wagner Brown defends the gold against Homicide. If Homicide is successful, we do not know where his place will be. It's Soul Survivor 7. Slick Wagner Brown is slated to face Shelton Benjamin, Mr. Money in the Bank either way. We have the huge contract signing at the Boston Garden, Saturday, February the 12th. If you have not got your tickets yet, you need to be part of the press conference, the contract signing, the Shelton Benjamin question and answer session. Autographs, photos, the Boston Blazers, Colorado Mammoth professional lacrosse team at the biggest arena in New England, the Boston Garden, Saturday, February the 12th. Oh, wait a minute, look at that. Homicide climbing the cage, showing Slick Wagner Brown exactly what it is he wants to leave with tonight, that championship belt. These two have a history here in the MWF. When Homicide debuted, crushing one of Jay Busta, the limp wristed warrior's friends, Luke Robinson, in his debut. Slick Wagner Brown humiliated Homicide, having three men hold him down while he sat in a chair and gave Homicide little baby slaps across the face. On the October MWF Extra, Slick's already trying to get out. Way too early for that, Mr. Brown. Slick got involved in Homicide's TNA X Division title match against Jay Lethal, which may have cost Homicide TNA gold here on MWF television. But tonight, he's got a title shot of his own and he's gonna come at Slick like a rabid pit bull. Brown with the boot to the midsection. Fans, one hour time limit on this one. If we run out of time, there is online overtime. The conclusion will be seen on bostonwrestling.com. If we have time tonight, you will also see TNA superstar, the Monster Abyss, taking on executioner Brian Malonis with Paul Bearer in that same steel structure. Down goes Slick Wagner Brown to the right hand of Homicide. He did it all in TNA, multi-time tag team champion, X division standout. And his, continue, his career continues to grow and expand. What's he gonna do right here? Standing on Brown, Using him as leverage to try and get out of the cage. Oh, wait a minute. Well, homicides, boys, and we're not talking about LAX. I think that prevented him from escaping. And look at that. Slick Wagner Brown using all the power he has left to bring homicide in the hard way. Look at him go to town now with those championship feet. 
Brown up. Look at that atomic drop. Slick Wagner Brown off the ropes. Wait a minute. He's, he's injured somehow. He grabbed his midsection. Couldn't even run the ropes. And look at that neck breaker from Homicide. The rules are simple. Walk out the door, climb over the top, pinfall is submission. Homicide trying to get out that door. It's positioned in a difficult way, and that allows Slick Wagner Brown to grab on. Homicide, again, fighting with all his might. Maybe a kick of his own could set Brown reeling backwards, and he could just walk out and capture the gold. Right there, he kicks Brown off, but I think he wants more of SWB. Beautiful suplex from Homicide. And again, is he gonna, he calls for the door. Dan Tanaka opens it up. Homicide's trying to decide, does he wanna humiliate Brown? Or just, oh, wait a minute, big mistake right there. He had a chance to walk out of here with the gold and beautiful drop kick from Slick Wagner Brown. Homicide goes ricocheting off the cage while SWB, the underground king, nips up. You have to think John Bradshaw Layfield is watching this one, fans. His pride and joy, the MWF heavyweight champion since June of 2009 when he won the championship competition is getting ready to headline another sole survivor as the MWF heavyweight champion. But he's got to win tonight to make it happen. To go on to the garden for the contract signing. Swinging neck breaker of his own. Returns the favor from earlier in the match. Oh, when Slick Wagner Brown, he'd have no problem trying to slither out the door like the snake that he is. Taking way too much time, though. Do you want to retain the title and go on to face Shelton Benjamin at Soul Survivor 7, March 19th or not? Homicide's not going to lay there forever. Oh, wait a minute. Look at that. Slams the cage door. Oh, no. Tried to slam the cage door off his face. Homicide climbing the ropes. Slamming the cage door with all his might off a of slick. He could fall out the cage. He better hold on to him. Face full of steel. Now, wait a minute. Homicide's got that shirt. What? Do, uh, uh, taunting him with it now. Oh, wait a minute. Cheeky baby, eat your heart out. Almost like a camel clutch. Only choking him out with his own T-shirt and appears to be grabbing his nose. Homicide trying to go up over the top of the cage. Slick has got him. Chopped to the back. We saw him do something very similar to Scott Reed last month on the January Ultra when we kicked off 2011. Right here. Beautiful shot from the cameraman. Right there. Look at him try and rake the face of Homicide into that cage. He looks like he's ready to pass out. His face is going to look like Play-Doh. It's Slick Wagner Brown goes to town on Homicide. Right forearm shot from Brown. Homicide comes out with a kick. Leg sweep. What are we going to see right here? Figure four? And what's Homicide calling for right now? Again, rolls around shades of Dory Funk Jr., but Brown uses his good leg and shot Homicide off the cage wall. Drop kick into the cage! Smart wrestling from Slick Wagner Brown. What are we going to see next? Looks like he's going to put him in a shades of Billy Jack Haynes right there with a full Nelson. Homicide breaks out of it and he gets a right elbow to the face for his efforts. Homicide again, face first, into the cage. 
And he's got that shirt again. He's calling for the door. Oh, wait a minute. Homicide's trying to escape. Brown's holding on for dear life. Homicide trying to break off a piece of the steps to get into the ring. Use that wood to slam it off his head. Look at him choke. Now he's using the bottom rope to choke out Homicide. Brown will do whatever it takes. Oh, wait a minute. That's going to do a number on his equilibrium. He's not going to have much balance after having the cage slammed off his door twice. With the velocity of a Pedro Martinez fastball. They're opening the door again. Slick is trying to get out, get away from him and climb over the top. Homicide trying to do what he can to catch up with them. Oh, wait a minute. This is a dangerous proposition for both men. Chop, a slap, another slap. Oh, wait a minute. Slick is going to fall out of the cage. He's going to... It looks like Homicide's trying to throw him out. But Slick would win. Slapped him across the face again. This is like Necro Butcher and Randy the Ram in the wrestler with the slap fest. Only these two are on top of the cage, not sitting in chairs. What is Homicide trying to do? I don't understand this thought process. It looks like he's trying. Oh, wait a minute. Brown shot him throat first off the top of the cage, and I can't imagine that that was a pleasant feeling. It's almost like Slick looks like he's stuck. That's a Jay Buster type position. Slick waiting to Brown trying to get down. Oh, wait a minute. Homicide's almost out the door, and Slick Wagner Brown, look at him, he's three quarters of the way out. And Brown's punching him. What the hell is he doing? We're going to see him a new champion. All he's got to do is get his feet to the floor. Rage in the cage has escaped the cage. Brown went, they DDT'd him back into the ring. I thought that was it. This match has been insane. Homicide looked like he wanted to commit murder and throw Slick Wagner Brown off the top of the cage to the floor. Then Homicide's feet, if he was another two inches taller, we'd have a new champion right now. But Slick Wagner Brown uses that veteran prowess that he has and DDT's Homicide back into the ring. What action here in the MWF? And if you think this is something, fans, be at the Boston Garden February 12th. Be at Soul Survivor March 19th. VIP package is on sale now. Boot to the midsection from Homicide. Wait a minute. We're going to see this. We've seen this before. The Gringo Killer. It almost broke AJ Styles' neck. Brown winds up on his feet. Sets him up into the cage. Elbow from Homicide. Goes for a clothesline. Slick ducks. Back suplex all the way over. Homicide up, standing leg drop from Slick Wagner Brown. The action will not stop. I don't think this one is going to go 60 minutes. Or one of them may not live. Homicide down. JBL is watching this one. Shelton Benjamin is watching this one. The fans around New England and around the world are watching this one. Why is Slick trying to climb over the top of the cage when he's right near the door? Does he think it'll make it more difficult for Homicide to pull him back in? Well, I think he picked the wrong spot to try and escape. Right hand from Homicide. What are we going to see right here? Another big-time suplex. Oh, Homicide holds on. We've seen this before. Dos. Y tres. Homicide's had enough. The bandana comes off. He can taste the gold. 
If he can just find a way to win it. Pin him. Escape. Climb. He's calling for the door again. Again, it is positioned in a difficult manner. I think President Cena did this for a reason. He just doesn't want these combatants to escape easily. And look at Brown again, trying to hold on. What is the referee doing trying to hold his hand? What the hell are you doing? Now that's just, I don't know. If the title changed hand that way, I would have loved to have seen the president's reaction. Brown goes for a drop kick. Homicide catches him. What we're going to see right here, I think we already know, fans. Sling slot, slingshot into the cage. Brown is on rubbery legs. Look at that. Like a running RKO of sorts. Homicide said that's enough. He's going up. He's going over. And I don't see Brown getting up anytime soon. Oh, oh wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, the Jay Buster's up on the ring. Trying to, and Tommaso Ciampa's pulling. He pulled Brown out of the ring before Homicide got to the floor. I don't even think Homicide realizes it. Slick Wagner Brown has retained the gold. He will go on to Soul Survivor in the main event to face Shelton Benjamin. Homicide has been screwed royally by John Layfield's uprising. Fans, Soul Survivor time. I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm John Cena Sr. Let us tell you how the action and excitement of the Millennium Wrestling Federation can help raise cash for your nonprofit cause. Experience the action and excitement of the Millennium Wrestling Federation live in your city throughout New England, the tri-state area, down through the Carolinas, out to our friends in the Midwest and beyond. If your nonprofit organization is looking for an interactive turnkey experience while putting the fun into fundraising, you've met the perfect tag team partner to work with every step of the way. The MWF offers a variety of packages for groups of almost any size, from our live events at the Boston Garden, the Kowloon Entertainment Dining Complex, and the legendary Suffolk Downs, to high school gyms and function halls. We've presented live events everywhere and anywhere. Since 2001, the MWF mission has been simple. Keep the kids off the streets. Under the leadership of President David Reese, we bring the superstars of yesterday, today, and tomorrow to your town. Not for a wrestling show, but an event that features action-packed in-ring wrestling, autograph, pose photo opportunities, Q&A sessions, and so much more. It's the best of sports and entertainment. The week of your event, we can add on to the endeavor with anti-bullying campaigns, library meet and greet reads, youth sport concussion seminars, and more. Our live events are fit for fans of any age from 5 to 95. This fall is part of our new Kids Club program. We offer live event experiences exclusively for the youngest of fans. On the flip side, we can produce a tailor-made event for fans of an older demographic as well. We work with you every step of the way to get the word out to fans near and far on our local television offerings and to over 50,000 fans and growing on our social media platforms. Your success is our success. If your group has had enough of candy bar and wrapping paper sales and has the energy to team with our passionate fan base, bringing the NWF experience to your community is the answer to put smiles on faces while raising cash for your cause. Contact us today to get the ball rolling for your custom made event that you'll want to bring back year after year to your community. Don't just take it from us. Here are the folks we've teamed up with in the past. 